Uh, unfortunately, yes, uh, you're completely right on that. Uh, we've had um, uh, violence in Kosovo over the last few days uh, where 30 uh, NATO peacekeeping soldiers in Kosovo have been injured, some of them severely. Over 50 uh, Serb, uh, Serb protesters have been uh, injured. Uh, and we've had, as you well know, a pattern of uh, this violence, particularly in the northern part of Kosovo, over the last year or so. Six months ago, when there was a dispute over the introduction of new license plates uh, in that area. So at a time when everybody, all responsible international politicians have been calling for de-escalation and a return to calm, it's obviously useful that if sports personalities want to say something, uh, the best thing they could do is also uh, appeal for a return to uh, calm and not try to politicise these issues, which are too politicised uh, uh, already. Yeah, indeed. How has Kosovo been destabilising things, though, in recent times, in your view? Well, the, the, the Kosovars clearly uh, want to sort of introduce their authority, their administration uh, in the northern part of the territory, which is still largely inhabited by about 80,000 ethnic Serbs who stayed on uh, after the war in 1999. But those Serbs have never uh, recognised the authority of the central government in Pristina, the capital of Kosovo. They've continued to want very close links to Belgrade. And they've been calling for the establishment of a so-called association of Serb municipalities, a kind of you know, local government, local self-administration network uh, which will give them a lot of control over police, education, tax, uh, and links to Belgrade. And although both Serbia and Kosovo have agreed in principle to set this thing up, they've got very different interpretations of what it actually means and how far the powers should go. So the only way forward is to try to break that deadlock get some kind of compromise on that uh, sort of status of self-administration uh, and then move uh, forward with it. And also to rerun the local elections, because the recent local elections in April had a turnout of just 3.5 percent. And it's not really reasonable for the prime minister of Kosovo, uh, Albin Kurti, to say, OK, still a le legitimate election. You know, if the Serbs didn't participate well, uh, they can only blame themselves. I'm going to go ahead and sort of appoint uh, four mayors. Uh, that is only inflaming the situation. So um, if we can have Belgrade and uh, and Kosovo refraining from sort of unilateral steps, uh, it would help. We need a period of calm before we move ahead politically. So politically, what is the way forward? Do you think it, it is essential that there is some form of independent Serb region, at least, in Kosovo? No, I really wouldn't go that far. Uh, the problem here, if you look at Bosnia next door, where, as everybody knows, there was also quite a brutal war in the 1990s, is, is that when the Bosnian peace settlement was was uh, was agreed, it created a, an entity called the Republika Srpska uh, in Bosnia under a firebrand nationalist leader called Dodic. And ever since, it's been sort of you know, paralyzing the instruments of the Bosnian state, refusing to cooperate, uh, uh, saying it's going to break away and declare independence. And I think the real problem in Kosovo is that the uh, majority Albanians are worried that if this association of Serb municipalities that I was speaking about a moment ago looks anything like the Republika Srpska uh, in, in Bosnia, it's going to be a, a recipe uh, for, uh, again, constitutional paralysis. So something short of that, not, not a kind of autonomy that leads to separatism, but something that gives the Serbs a degree of self-administration and uh, an assurance that their rights are protected and that they have a future in Kosovo rather than all decamping and going uh, back to Serbia. Yeah. You know, you were there at the time when um, Serbia was driven out of Kosovo. Uh, do you think, looking back, there, sh there may have been a different way forward? Well, unfortunately, it depends how far you want to go back in history. Yes, I think the big mistake was when the Bosnian issue was settled. I was just referring to it at the Dayton Peace Conference in 1995. That would have been a time to uh, put Kosovo into that mix and try to get an agreement on that particular issue at the same time. But it was missed, unfortunately. Uh, and then, of course, we had the war. And as you know, after a war, uh, uh, relations between the warring parties are so bad that any reconciliation is postponed by 20 or 30 years 
years. Tragically, we see that in so many uh, other places. But it's not all bad news. The, the Serbs and the Kosovars, under the auspices of the European Union, with support of the United States, have been negotiating to normalize their relations. They have come to an agreement to do that. And, and so the key thing now is to implement that agreement on things like, you know, symbols, documents, travel, uh, communications and so on. Uh, and then gradually move forward on, on the basis of that. Of course, the EU has got also a great influence because both Serbia and Kosovo want to join the EU eventually. Uh, and that's a lever which hopefully can get them to reform and to treat each other more nicely. Yeah. And, you know, just finally, Jamie, do you think NATO's presence is problematic or essential at this point in time? Yes, it is. Uh, and in fact, NATO uh, uh, has had to put in 700 extra soldiers uh, over the last couple of days from its special operations uh, reserve to keep the peace. Uh, and it has had to keep 4,000 soldiers in Kosovo. Often people say that Afghanistan was NATO's longest operation, which is not true. Uh, Kosovo has been by far NATO's longest operation. Uh, uh, and uh, as we saw with the riots over the last couple of days, the presence of those troops is still essential uh, because the Kosovo police is not trusted by the uh, Serbs. Uh, the EU police force, which is there, is too small to deal with riot situations. So we need the, uh, the soldiers there uh, still, hopefully not forever. Ever, but at least I think for the next few years. Jamie, really good. You, your expertise in this has really been so interesting and helpful. Thanks so much. Thank you for the invitation.